really sucks when we go from zero to a hundred different things to talk about in one day and there's only so many slots of things in my given day okay it could be like the quartering or the quarter pounder whatever you want to call him i think that he's a mid-tier content creator but still the guy puts out a whole bunch of content of varying quality and one of the reasons that i started my own channel was because of his just absolute mediocrity but i've got a standard okay and i've got three slots to put out content okay and today is a little bit more political heavy than normal mostly because in a couple of hours time or maybe by about the time that this ends up being released to the public uh, joe biden supposedly having some speech in philadelphia he's calling it the soul of the nation I can kind of figure out what they're going to be talking about based on some of the rhetoric that's been coming out of the White House in the past couple of days. And oh boy, we'll be talking about that specifically. But what's going to be at the center of this? No, no, no. Nothing about unity or healing or anything that Joe Biden was actually running on. Oh, I'm going to be a president for all Americans. No, no, no. Uh, take a look at how bad my opposition is. Take a look at Trump, right? Mm, yes, we had, to, we had to raid his residence and I had nothing to do about that at all. Nope, nothing whatsoever nothing possibly to do with me i had no idea what was going on okay and uh, everything that was seized from his residence the hundred and some odd documents 180 documents that were there they are so secretive and they are so important to keep under wraps that the fbi can spill some on the ground take pictures of them and then also show that trump framed a couple of time magazine covers I don't know why they're having to take those. That doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. But yeah, they're trying to push that out there as a big gotcha. Look at that. Trump has a bunch of things that has covers on it. Cool. That says secret. And again, they're so secretive that the FBI took a picture of this and put it on the internet. Okay, this is... Not really looking that good for you. It's looking more and more like a political op as the days go on. U.S. Department of Justice revealed a photograph of allegedly secret documents recovered during the raid on former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence, arguing the former president's legal team misled the federal government. Oh, <gasps> not the federal government. We're the arbiters of truth. Uh, the new 36-page filing late Tuesday, the DOJ addressed the investigation into Trump and the former president's compliance. Thus far, the federal government accused Trump of repeatedly failing to return classified White House documents despite being subpoenaed and promising a diligent search to recover any documents. And again, he complied with all that stuff. He really did. And again, his response to this, because I don't give a fuck what they're having to talk about. I just want to move on to the stuff that I kind of want to talk about. Anyways, Trump responds to the photos of the documents released. Lucky I declassified it. Okay, I'm not quite as good as Jamie Foxx's impression. Have you seen that motherfucker's impression? It's pretty goddamn good. Okay, he's a very talented man. And I have a lot of reverence for Jamie Foxx. He just hasn't been in a hell of a lot of good movies. Like, ever okay ray was pretty good and it's been a while since i've watched it but i remember that being pretty good he won an oscar for it and then he followed that up with stealth and what the fuck was that all right he was electro and ooh, spider-man 2 i think i watched that anyways former president donald trump responded to a photo of allegedly classified documents released by the government again these are classified documents so classified that they could just release the picture of it it's uh, okay don't think about it too much okay you need, you need to be a part of the majority oh boy we'll get to that uh terrible terrible the way the fbi i think that they're corrupt we should probably look into that see if i can get rid of the fbi during the raid of mar-a-lago through docu documents haphazardly all over the floor perhaps pretending it was me that did it could you believe it could you believe that and then started taking pictures of them for the public to see. Thought they wanted to, uh, wanted them kept secret. Lucky I declassified them. I declassified them all. That's why I had them. I returned what they wanted, what they asked for. And I kept copies because they're declassified. If you'd like to see them, I'd like to show you them. But the FBI stole them from me. The FBI raided Trump's Florida residence in August in search of classified materials, nuclear codes. And then when that didn't pan out, uh, national defense intelligence. Uh, we don't like Trump and we stole his Time magazine covers because 
I don't know, needed inspiration for Joe. Like, I don't fucking know. Again, I guess we'll see where this goes eventually. Oh, because another follow-up and another piece of news on that. Uh, the judge who indicated that she wants to have a special master appointed to overseeing documents. She's not ready to appoint a special master yet. And it's like, bitch, the fucking shit or get off the pot at this point. Okay. Now let's go into what the white house is talking about and what is more than likely going to be at the center of this i don't know retarded speech that biden's just going to ramble off and I, is he even going to take questions i don't even know if it's going to be worth covering tomorrow because there's something i want to talk about specifically and it involves the top g himself and how you can fight back against all of these fucking online pussies. But anyways, specifically talking about the White House, they say the Donald Trump supporters are a threat to our democracy. Good thing that the United States is a constitutional republic and not a simple fucking democracy because Lord have mercy, if it was simply that, it would be democratic rule and de democratic suffering from here until fucking eternity. The White House denounced supporters of President Donald Trump on Wednesday, accusing them of posing as extremist threats to our democracy. Hashtag trademark our democracy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I would play you that clip, but don't worry. She doubles down on it today. I thought that this was a hoax yesterday. I think I made reference to it at some point or another. One of the videos that was out there yesterday. But I was, I seen the headline. It's like, okay, maybe this is taken out of context. And nope, sure as shit. She's like, if you support the president, or the former president, not the current president. Because nobody supports the current president. Let's be fucking honest here. You're an extremist. You have the wrong think that's out there. Wow, she's just, I guess a couple, couple months late on that one. Because Justin Trudeau was already running that against the small fringe minority of people who hold uh, unsavory values or whatever the fuck he uses. Hey, d d Justin Trudeau hates everybody who isn't in his inner circle. Oh, uh, White House Press Secretary Jean uh, Karine, a uh, gay black lady, began the day briefing at, by condemning Republican leaders for their dangerous rhetoric, but also said that President Joe Biden believes supporters of the former President Donald Trump were also a threat. Oh, the unity president thinks that anybody who supports Donald Trump, who is Again, if you look at some of the poll numbers that are out there are more plentiful than your very own supporters. But hey, man, to each their own, I guess. So he thinks that uh, he's presiding over a country that um, doesn't appreciate the way that he's doing things. Hmm, weird, wild. Let me be very clear. And then here comes a whole bunch of horseshit, okay? It's not just Republican leadership. It's not just that blanket right, she said to reporters. He's talking about an extreme portion, an extreme part of the party. Uh, gay black lady pre uh, previewed the president's speech planned for Thursday about restoring the soul of democracy. What are you talking about? Soul of democracy. It's supposed to be in Philadelphia. I think that's where it's supposed to be. Is uh, old stroke victim there, uh, Andre the Giant, John Fetterman, going to show up? Probably not, because he'll just mutter and mumble and speak into a fucking microphone. You think I'm over-exaggerating that. You think I'm being hyperbolic. Three weeks ago, the motherfucker had a stroke. Oh, so he can go on stage and be with another person with a fucked up brain. So maybe, you know what, hey, I'll go to shake each other's hand and miss four or five times. That's alright, nobody will be there to criticize him, because neither of those motherfuckers can actually draw a crowd. Like, why can't anybody except for stupid a doctor housewife be running against Fetterman? Because it would be so fucking simple. The motherfucker doesn't own anything outside of a hoodie and a pair of shorts. It's fucking embarrassing. Like, hey, come on, I'm a content creator. I, I got a fucking, you know, a wife beater and a pair of shorts that you can't see. At least they're black and under armor. They're kind of nice, actually. Um... When you are supporting an authoritarian figure, yeah, an authoritarian figure who was voted out of power and, and, and left when he was asked to and um, has complied with the federal government and you guys are, you know, performing a witch hunt because I know a whole bunch of former dictators that comply with the rule of the uh, the governing institution right now and don't cause much of a much of a fuss about it. But OK, cool. As we have seen, who is leading, currently leading the former president, you know, and I'm um, saying the little literal um in there right there. OK, that was not me at that this is a paid professional paid propagandist saying and inciting the violence that you are or wanting to take our freedoms you need oh you know we need to say something she said what the 
fuck are you actually talking about? What what violence are you saying? Oh, January 6th, once again, where we're going to go down to the Capitol and we're going to be there peacefully and lovingly and we're going to have to fight like hell. Oh, that's how obviously a call for insurrection. Except for how many different investigations have you had and no charges of insurrection have ever materialized? Oh, okay, cool. A uh, gay black lady asserted that there were more examples we can count of Trump supporters and Republican leaders demonstrating their threats to democracy. Can you just like point out one just for just for the people that are in the audience, right? And just just one, because we can go and take a list or take a look at any of the things that Maxine Waters has said in the past six years. Okay, Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris. Uh, we can we can point at a whole host of Democrats calling for and inciting violence. Hell, even AOC herself, the future of the Democratic Party, she's called for violence. All of them have called for violence. Anybody over there on the Republican side? No, no, not not one. She specifically complained about Ron DeSantis. Oh my God, she is she going to be up there on that uh, Democrats uh, complaining about Ron DeSantis Twitter page? Because that'd be funny calling for Anthony Fauci to be physically assaulted <gasps> when he said that somebody needs to grab that little elf and chuck him across the Potomac. Okay, <laughs> that's a very actionable threat that you have right there because Fauci's a literal elf and you could uh, literally throw him across the Potomac. No, he's a small little old guy, but still, nobody's fucking skipping him like a stone. What are you talking about? So yeah, no, just go ahead and demonize half the country. And then when you had the opportunity to go ahead and clarify your position... Well, you just decided to say when you, when you are not with the majority of Americans are, okay, uh, then you know what is extreme. That is an extreme way of thinking. I'll let her. I said it myself, but hey, man, we can just go ahead and let her say it herself, okay? So uh, all the audio's on. Here you go. Just let her play. And again, we see majority of Americans who disagree. And so when you with are you. not with where majority of Americans are, oh. then, you know, that is extreme. That is an extreme way of thinking. And so that's not pulled out of context or anything. That's actually what she said. If you don't go along with the mob, you are an extremist and you should be excised from society. I'm adding in a little bit of commentary, right? If you aren't with a majority of people, you know, like the winner of the popular vote or something like that, we'll just throw something out there. Or, you know what? Hey, just metaphorically, we'll just go ahead and make this comparison. Okay. If you're not with a majority of people, live on the coast because the middle of the country doesn't much matter why does why does land get to vote nobody lives in those places the electoral college system is stupid that's why it's written in the constitution that's why you motherfuckers want to overthrow it and you refer to it as our democracy instead of the constitutional republic that you currently reside in and lord over like actual authoritarians okay us versus theming an entire swath of the population okay if you aren't on our side you're an extremist okay you should basically be on the fbi's watch list okay it's funny right because they just hold lore or they just hold 2020 over everybody's head like oh that's a big boogeyman that's out there it's just funny when you just go ahead and take a look at her official Twitter page, right? Um, and she's making claims about 2016, which is totally fine, by the way, right? Stolen emails. <sighs> hmm. Stolen drone. Not too sure about that one. Stolen election? Welcome to the world of unprecedented Trump. Care of December 17th, 2016. Words like that? That sounds like extremist language to me. At least it is under your current definition. Oh, no, no. But back in the day, that was absolutely co-signed by the entire Democratic Party. Hmm. Hell, even the certification of those votes were challenged. In the, in the House, at least. Maxine Waters was one of them. So, yeah. It's funny when the shoe's on the other foot. It just goes to show you. Okay? They don't want Republicans to ever get control. Okay? And if it was just a run-of-the-mill Republican, like if this was, I don't know, George F. Bush, okay? If this was Jeb Bush, I'm on the other side. Let's just go ahead for... Just for saying, okay, like if this was just another actor for the Uniparty, maybe the Democrats wouldn't be going so hard. But because Trump was the theoretical monkey wrench into the system and just completely fucked up the works for four years and everybody was spurging out, okay, when it came to him, 
That's why they're so big shook, okay? And that's why they're just really exposing the fact that there really is no big cabal over top of all this stuff, okay? Because if there was, they would be a little bit more sophisticated about this because these are just everyday people just really enjoying their power, their very fleeting power that they're seeing, okay? Like grabbing a handful of water. They're just seeing most of it slip between their fingers. So they're doing everything that they can, okay? To demonize the other side because they couldn't force their values on top of them now they're just going to try to excise them from society okay and that's why you get to a leak like this and something that i don't think joe's going to be talking about when it comes to his stupid little speech today in philadelphia biden administration held weekly censorship meetings with social media giants to suppress the coof and vaccine speech oh hmm Imagine that. It's almost like, it's almost like we had a head of a major social media organization go on the largest podcast online. One of the most prominent, because we don't actually get, you know, legitimate numbers or anything like that. But him come out and say an actor from the FBI came in and deliberately said that, hey, you guys should be on the up and up. Hey, hey, be on the up and up for Russian disinformation regarding Hunter Biden's laptop. Hey, you, you should, you know, do that thing that you guys like to do. You thought that that would be the only instance? <laughs> come on now. Come on, man. Federal officials in the Biden administration secretly conspired secretly well they were pretty fucking bad at this and another reason why there's not just a big puppet master cabal up at the top okay this was one of these admissions okay that happens when you have these fucking inept assholes when the people in charge get so brazen with their tactics okay they really start to expose themselves and that's what we have right here you have desperate people you have dumb people doing what they've always done but unfortunately, they just can't keep their fucking mouth shut this time, and they trust the wrong people. But you have the Biden administration secretly conspired with communicate and communicated with social media companies to censor and suppress Americans' private speech. This was revealed in a new lawsuit brought in a joint effort by the New Civil Liberties Alliance, the Attorney General of Missouri, and the Attorney General of Louisiana against the President of the United States. The suit is brought under the First Amendment right to the freedom of speech. Yeah, no, exactly, because you're talking about direct interaction between the federal government and these social media platforms. Ergo, they're acting as political actors, so now the First Amendment would apply. The lawsuit seeks to identify, among other things, all meetings with any social media platform relating to content modulation and or misinformation. Hmm. The discovery shows that there was a recurring meeting, usually entitled USG Industry Meeting, which has generally had a monthly cadence and is between government agencies and private industry. Government participants have included CISA's in ele or Election Security and Resilience Team, DHS's Office of Intelligence and Analysis, the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force and Justice Department's National Security Division, and the Director of... Oh, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence industry participants have uh, included Google, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Microsoft, Verizon Media, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and the Wikimedia Foundation. Hmm. Wow. That's literally everybody. Topics discussed included, but were not limited to, information sharing around election risk, briefs from industry, hmm, threat updates, and highlights and upcoming watchouts. Here's, here's our list of certain things that we want you to not quite censor but you know whatever your equivalent of blacklisting or shadow banning is on your platform communications across 11 federal agencies reveal the federal government under the biden administration has exerted tremendous pressure on social media companies pressure to which companies have repeatedly bowed in the new civil liberties alliance details in the new release social media companies that were part of the partner support portal include twitter facebook instagram youtube and linkedin okay cool great all of the big ones uh, the CDC invited all tech platforms into their meetings to discuss how to suppress or suppress uh, free speech about COVID online. Yeah, just add little disclaimers or just get rid of the content and uh, just make a strike system about it if you're on YouTube. Or just delete entire accounts if you're Twitter because the fuck it, terms of service, what are those? 
there you got some emails that are apparently uh, looks like they've been filed and all that shit so they're exam or their exhibits and the lawsuit itself hi uh, redacted uh, thanks for sharing this agree these are important trends to know to quick sta uh, scan shows that at least some of these have uh, been previously reviewed and actioned i will uh, now ask the team to review the others remind me did you have a chance to enroll in our partner support portal in the future, it's the best way to get a spreadsheet reviewed like this. Best regards, whatever the fuck your name is, okay? Agencies include the White House, HHS, DHS, CISA, and the CDC, AIDS, uh, the Office of the Surgeon General, the Census Bureau, the FBI, the FDA, State Department, Treasury Department, the U.S. Election Assistance Commission. Okay, so all of them as well. The NCLA f uh, notes further that during discovery process of the lawsuit, the government has been uncooperative. What? No. And has resisted complying with the discovery order every step of the way, especially with regard to Fauci's communications. Well, he's retiring at the end of the year, so you don't need to know anything about that. Hmm. The 700-page joint statement on discovery disputes uh, that was termed the Partner Support Portal was revealed. An integrated communication system between government agencies and officials and social media companies to regulate and control American speech, not only with regards to the COOF, but in regards to their own experiences. Meta identified 32 federal officials who were involved in censorship requests on the platform. Facebook and Twitter right there. Well, Twitter disclosed nine. YouTube YouTube 11. Wow. I would have thought there would have been more for YouTube. Anyways, maybe it's just a couple of fucking hamsters that run this platform. Interesting. Communications did not only go from the government to the platform. One notable occurrence happened after Biden claimed in July of 2021 that Facebook was killing people. Oh yeah, with their misinformation. Now funny how all the science has changed on all this stuff and Oh, no, yeah, just uh, back to business as usual, right, guys? Come on, we got an election to worry about right now. Or you can go ahead and forgive all your student debt, right? Yeah, you won't care about any of that stuff, right? Remember how we ripped you away from your loved ones during their dying days? Wasn't that, wasn't that so necessary, not fun? No, of course not. Please don't hold that against us. Meta reached out to the Surgeon General after the comment to engage in damage, damage control and it Appease the president's wrath, the NCLA states. Wow. And especially if they've got the emails on that one. How are you going to backtrack out of this? Oh, you're just going to go ahead and, you know, disregard the existence of this. I understand. That's why you're also not cooperating. According to emails, the information that was censored includes vaccine refusals. The members of the military were targeted. Vaccine refu refusal appeared in two main contexts in highly engaged posts. Posts, sorry, military refusals and consequences, often employment related for refusing the vaccine. Wow, like those mandates that were put in place. Fucking weird about that shit. They go into further specific examples. One notable is uh, information regarding a vaccine passport system in New York City, which they denied at the time and then eventually ended up becoming true, mostly so that they could get all these specifics correct. Uh, one could surmise, but we'll see if this actually ends up going anywhere. I'm sure as fuck hope it does because I want all of these motherfuckers held accountable for all of this dumb shit, but... That's just one thing that is incredibly important. Ergo, the Biden administration isn't going to be talking about it because I'm sure directly from after Joe's speech this evening, he's probably going to be going out for a long weekend or some shit like that, okay? He's had a very tough, long week, and it's going to be a long weekend here, so I'm going to get kicked off in style by... I don't know, just don't fall off the fucking stage because I got enough shit planned for tomorrow, so, you know, hey, just don't do anything too terribly stupid. I don't want to have to fucking discuss that annoying speech. But anyways, with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone. So anyways, I was recording a whole bunch of other content for the other channel and then for this channel as well. And I thought here Joe's old story was going to end up being, you know, like at least an hour long. You might take some questions or anything like that. But no, he decided to, I don't know, address the nation in front of 20 of his closest friends at the gates of hell, for Christ's sakes. Like, what the fuck? Who decided on the backdrop for this shit? Okay, red floodlights? Okay. 
okay in front of Independence Hall where he would just go on for about 20 minutes after he shuffled up to the podium. I hate MAGA Republicans. We all need to come together as a nation. Uh, that, that part are terrorists and we're going we're gonna to be better as Americans. Okay, vote Democrat. Okay, bye. That was the gist of his fucking story. I wasn't even going to waste the airspace tomorrow talking about this stuff. I've seen a report already written up. It was 20 fucking minutes long, this video itself, after I chop everything up, okay? And then adding this little recap off the back of it really isn't going to warrant its own coverage for tomorrow. So I might as well, while everything's hot, just talk about basically what he was talking about. It was all about the battle for the soul of America. It was basically a big rallying cry for the Democrats and no other Democrats running in Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, except for maybe the guys who were outside of the proceedings. Okay, I guess maybe they weren't a part of the press crew. They got a preferential seating in order to see this disaster up front and personal. Okay. They were out there with their sirens yelling, fuck Joe Biden. Fuck Joe Biden. And a whole bunch of other fun stuff that they were doing outside of that. And it got Joe's attention. So I don't really know. Maybe it was staged or something like that in order for him to really emphasize that those mega Republicans are evil. And they're, they're, they're divisive. Meanwhile, I, I don't know what he's, he's stopping short of saying that he's going to sh- set up washing wits. And all of the mega Americans need to get on the train so they can be processed at, at Capitol Hill. And again, repeating the same thing that January 6th was a violent insurrection that was worse than Pearl Harbor. I'm pretty sure he fucking said that. This was embarrassing on a multitude of levels. It did nothing. The setting was stupid. The speech was vacuous. And it was a whole bunch of fear propagandizing. And you know what you do with propaganda? You fucking laugh at it. Because it's not intended to inform. It's intended to to discourage and demoralize. So what are you going to do with that information now that you know it? Just poke fun and laugh at old Uncle Joe, who may or may not have yelled at mega horses and and, uh, mega fudge. (sighs) Boy. President Joe Biden condemns supporters of the former President Donald Trump. Uh, The mega Republicans. But I know mainstream Republicans. That's going to be another through line coming through here. Okay, mainstream Republicans. What does he mean by that? All of the ones who aren't going to be seeking re-election going forward and into the future. Are like, what the fuck is going on here? He doesn't understand it. He's going to get fucking skunked in these midterms. If, you know, they don't do... What's the nicest way of saying it? I don't know how you say steal without saying steal. So I think I put enough words between what I was talking about and an upcoming election. Okay, in order to skirt certain things. Anywho, but the speech was prompted as an admission to restore the soul of the nation. Dude, you've been in charge of this shit since 2021. Okay, January 20th, 2021. It's been your fucking country and we've seen how you propagate it and we've seen how you run it so far. So now you need to, okay, you're the guy who's been in charge of all this chaos. Okay, rising inflation, the debacle that was in Afghanistan. Okay. Supply chain shortages, rising gas prices. Do we need to continue? Okay, but now, now you, you're going to figure out, okay, and your nearly 80-year-old head is going to figure out how to restore the soul of the nation right now? Well, I'm all ears, Joe. Uh, but the president focused entirely on raising fears of his political opponents, which he knows outnumbers them, okay? Because even people that voted for him because, oh, he was the lesser of two evils, it's not even close to being the case. One guy actually likes the country, and the other one wants to see it remolded in his image. They promote authoritarian leaders, and they fan the flames of political violence, and they're all a threat to our personal rights. To the pursuit of justice, to the rule of law, and the very soul of this country. Biden said during his sharply political speech at Independence Hall in Pennsylvania. Imagine that. Independence Hall. Where the Constitution, where the United States Constitution was signed. Condemning political violence? Huh. Just let that sink in for a moment, okay? Um, This is the same administration. If we were to just roll back the clock some 250 years saying that uh, those dangerous folks out there on the Potomac, uh, man, uh, they're just really, really showing that they're a threat to our monarchy and we just can't have this. The president repeatedly claimed he rejected political violence despite repeatedly calling for his fellow Americans to rise up against the uh, supporters of Trump, denouncing political violence. Okay, saying that he's going to unite America. This is a battle for the soul of the nation. We hate Trump supporters. 
the president, the actual fucking president, had a 20 minute long speech saying that anybody that didn't vote for me are fucking garbage individuals and we just all need to come together. What the fuck are you talking about? This, it made no sense. I was enthralled listening to this stuff and he's a warped individual. A nation that rejects violence as a political tool. Again, see the founding of this nation, okay? We do not encourage violence, he said. Oh, really? Okay, now do Black Lives Matter. Okay, now do uh, Antifa. Okay, oh, but again, that's just an idea. You don't condone that or anything. And that just happens every two to four years. Don't worry about it. He said the violence was a tool of mega Republicans focusing intently on the insurrection on January 6th. Where were those insurrection charges? I didn't see any of those around here, but I've seen a lot of collusion with big tech. Did you, did you want to address that either? No, no, of course not. Didn't think so. Um... We cannot allow violence to be normalized in this country, Biden said. It is wrong. We must reject political violence with all the law and clarity and conviction this nation can muster. Biden argued the majority of Republicans are not extreme. Just the 74 million that voted for Trump? Is that what you're talking about here? Okay, but insisted that Trump continue to drive their political fever. You know he doesn't hold political office right now, and in fact, you and your corrupt FBI are trying to prevent him from running again in 2024? Good luck with that. Biden argued that the majority of Republicans were not extreme, and I already read that. There's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the mega Republicans, and that a threat to our country. Biden said the Democrats could see the light in the darkness, as again, you can see all the photographs just on the side here of how good old Uncle Joe was framed during this. Again, blood red lights, darkness. I don't know if he's trying to play into his whole dark Brandon fucking gimmick, but again, it was terrible aesthetics and the speech wasn't any fucking better. But yeah, no, he could see the light in the darkness, which he described as COVID, gun violence, and insurrection. Yes, because Donald Trump caused uh, COVID, uh, he's actually been pulling every trigger of every gun that has been fired and has resulted in a death and also he was at the front there he had the big tri-corner hat and he was like we're gonna charge it to the capital i don't quite think so but again my memory is not as good as a dementia riddled old fuck who likes to shower with his daughter just saying the president tried to define mega republicans oh boy as those who believed Americans had no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to or contraception, no right to marry who you love. I'm sorry, maybe, maybe I've missed that somewhere on, you know, the mega agenda, okay? Make America great agenda, okay? Perhaps that's in the ultra mega pages, okay? Maybe that's a part of the mega king edict, okay? Haven't quite got to those papers yet, okay? But uh, right to choose, uh, right to choose what bodily autonomy, where you don't want to have to get a jab, an experimental jab, in order to participate in polite society. Hmm. Okay. Uh, no right to privacy. Again, see FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago over documents that you thought were so private that they needed to be carried out, and the investigation needed to be carried out in secret. But then at the same time, splashing them all over the floor to take pictures of interesting interesting interpretation of what you believe by privacy and again one of the biggest information leaks came out uh, edward snowden right about the nsa spying on a normal private individuals that came out during the trump uh the bush no nope. oh the obama administration oh okay no right to privacy though okay no right to contraception oh my god roe v wade was just overturned wait a minute let me just check the clock who is in charge all right that's you joe Oh, okay, cool. No right to marry who you love. Oh, okay, Clarence Thomas said that, um, lo not, lo was that Loving v. Virginia? Oh, no, right. Oh, uh, they're talking about gay marriage and shit like that. He's saying that, yeah, those are probably bad legal precedents, but if Congress wants to do something about that, you guys can go ahead and ratify it. Still, again, he's saying one thing. Does that mean that all Republicans want that all re uh, removed? Oh, but again, he's, he's just once again trying to point out the exceptions or the majority of Republicans, but it was enough to make a 20 minute long speech and really, really just try to further divide the country. But again, he's a president for all Americans that are out there. He's not, he's not an angry man. Come on, man. Mega Republicans have made their choice. Oh my God, they've stamped their tickets to Delaware Schwitz. I understand. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. Again, this took place in the fucking dark with <laughs> dark red, dark red iconography, black and red 
iconography of an old man yelling, clenches his fists. Where have we seen that before? Again, confession through fucking projection. Joe Biden encapsulated in one simple fucking phrase. Fuck you, Joe. And with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. Now we're actually going to finish this. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.